Hello fellow Gwent players! We have gotten a update for a June patch. The season of Magic has started and I want to show you a little deck that I've built at the end of last season, but I still think it can do well in this season. It's a Philavandral Dwarf deck. Let's see what it looks like. Coming up, thus press drop! This is the deck. You have Philavandral as your leader. And before I go into the cards in detail, I want to talk about the way you play Philavandral in this deck. Now what you usually do with Philavandral is play until you have seven cards in your hand and then you just pass. If you know that the opponent is gonna bleed, you're just gonna turn one, play Philavandral in round two. And if you think that the opponent wants to go for a long round, you hold on to your Philavandral for round three. But this deck doesn't do that. This deck does not play Philavandral until round three, no matter how many cards Philavandral has, which means that you can push round one. And this is where the hard part in this deck comes. You can push with this deck, but you have to also know when to pass. As there are certain times as you can't get too greedy with pushing the round with these doors, as a lot of these dwarves do benefit from a long round. And now I will go into the cards in more detail. We have Dwarven Skirmisher. We're playing this card because it's a dwarf. That's the only reason we're playing it. It is one of the few four provision dwarves. It's a five point play. People do tend to play around it. You will always try and mulligan this, but there are certain instances where you actually want this card in your hand, especially against something like NR, when they sometimes play something front row and this card can get quite a bit of value. The next card is Dwarven Agitator. Pretty self-explanatory as you're running a dwarf deck. In this deck, this card will mostly find a target. So keeping it in round one is never a problem. In later rounds, this card is not as powerful as in round one because in round one it produces that carryover for later rounds, whereas in round three or two, this card is maybe just sometimes just a four point play. So do be careful with the mulligan on this card in later rounds. Next card is Vryhead Dragoon. This is simply there because we have no other four provision slot. The other four provision dwarf that we have requires you to play artifacts, which I I'm not running, especially because I'm also running full of Andrel. So this is just a little slot. It works very well against NR sometimes. It can also enable your Skirmisher if you have both in hand. Mac and Volunteers. Now this card in this deck is actually an MVP, unlike in other decks where usually you don't have enough doors. And this card kind of just bricks a lot of the times. But in this deck, you're going to get this off 99 out of 100 games. This card is going to get its full value of 6 points plus the thinning. Next up is Dwarven Mercenary. Now against control matchups, you mulligan this card. Against non-control matchups, you can actually keep this card as it is very strong. It is like a Lyrian Arbalist, except that you need to play dwarves and you have plenty of dwarves in your deck. Next up is Doppler. Now this card is just a good little tempo play. It usually produces seven to eight points, but also don't be afraid to mulligan this card in later rounds as it is not a dwarf and you do want a full dwarven hand in later rounds. Mackham Defender basically is just an, a big point unit, an engine that the opponent wants to stop, that the opponent needs to stop. It gets instantly triggered if you play Philavandral on it. It also gets enabled if you play an Agitator on it, which is very good in round one when you're not using Philavandral. It does run into big removal, but I do think that Right now, there's not a lot of big removal going around, and it's safe to say that this card is playable. It's very good in later rounds, especially in a short round. This can produce up to eight or seven points, which is one or two above its provision cost. Milva boosts itself whenever you play Scoia'tael unit. You're playing a lot of Scoia'tael units, so this card, don't be afraid to use her in round one. She's basically there for you to be able to push the round and maybe find a nice little decent pass. Next up is Barkley Else. This boosts an ally by one for each Dwarven ally you have on the board. So this is very good in a long round. And this is why I'm saying Volunteers is a very powerful card in this deck because it produces two Dwarves, which is two extra points on this card. If the opponent also damaged, 
your Mahakam defender. This can boost it back up for the defender to be boosted again for it to become the scary engine that it is. Next up is Weeping Willow. Now this at the moment is a flex slot, but I do think it's very effective as I do run Ithlin in this deck. And if I don't find something like a Sheldon, this card does find value on the Ithlin. Also, it's just a seven with shield if you play Philavandral that turn. So this card is just very solid all in all, but it's a flex slot at the moment. I'm still trying to figure out the cards that are not dwarves, which I want to put in this deck. For the moment, it's Weeping Willow as it is a very consistent card. The next card is Dennis Cranmar. You're also gonna be playing Great Oak, so you're gonna roll stack anyway. So also playing this card to incentivize the row stacking is very, very strong. And if you know that the opponent does play Lacerate, you can just play this for its melee ability of boosting the adjacent units by two for a total of seven points. Sultan Shive, just like Barclay Elves, requires you to run a long round. Again, with the volunteers, they give you two extra points on this card and this card is actually very, very strong. At five power, when you have four dwarves on the board, this already gets above provision plus its removal. So this card is all around just very solid in the long round that this deck has. Next up is Polly Dahlberg. Now this card can keep your Mahakam defenders alive for maybe a few more turns because it gives the shield to the unit right to it. And it's also very hard to kill as a six. With Philavandral, it's a seven. If you don't need the shield, you can just boost a unit to the left by two to get it up for eight points, which is very, very solid still. Sheldon Skaggs. Now this card basically depends on when you want to pass and when you don't want to pass because this card basically ensures your short round. If you don't draw this card round one, do not go for the hard push in round one. This card is arguably the strongest short round card in the game, but it requires a lot of setup and it also requires you to draw it. So basically drawing Sheldon is what can win or lose you certain games, which is very binary, but at the same time, you don't really mind because if you have it in hand, you're just a happy boy. Gabo Zergren, Gabo Zygrin basically enables you to pass certain rounds at certain times. If you know the opponent wants to go for the long round, you can pass on five cards and then play this card out next round if the opponent dry passes and have five extra points. If not, you can just play this as an immune unit, which boosts self by one for every dwarf you play which is really strong because you're playing a lot of dwarves in this deck. Next up is Cleaver. Now they've nerfed Cleaver from a nine to a 10, understandable, but I still think it is necessary for this deck as it can negate the coin flip. It is a dwarf as well, which obviously synergizes with the entire deck. And I do think it is simply a consistent card even at its 10 provision. Ithlin, boost the Scarretail unit in your hand by four. Now, as I said, if you have this card and Skags in your hand in round one, you can push the round against anything other than Scarretail maybe because Scarretail decks all play Sheldon Skags, but against something like a Nilf guard, you don't really care if you go down a card because Skags and this is just very, very powerful. And she also enables me to put in Whispering Hillock into this deck as it gives me a second target for the Ithlin to get more value out of my Ithlin. And the last card is Great Oak. In the long round, this card is obviously bananas and it gives the deck a more solid foundation for its short round. And this is the deck. Let's go see the new season. We want to go back into pro rank. Let's see how far this deck can get us. Okay, we're playing against Arrakis Queen. Now, Arrakis Queen wants a long round just like we do. Okay, that's good. Can get rid of this too, actually. All right, that's a good hand. Now it's a good hand. Passing here actually isn't that bad. We have all good long round cards in our hand here. So we should be fine, actually. Because this is just a huge power swing. We can't do anything against it. Okay, he passed. We're going for the long round now. And this is where this deck actually thrives. We're gonna produce so many points here. It's actually gonna be insane. We got everything we could ask for here. So he's playing Summoning Circle. 
which I'm okay with. And this is where it thrives. It's just these insane engines that if kept unchecked, they're just gonna go off like crazy. I give this a shield because I do think he plays Cleaver still. And because of that. Like, with five dwarves on the board, this card is now a 10-point card, which you're paying seven for. And we're just gonna just slam points without even questioning. Plus, these two are gonna keep getting boosted. This gets boosted. He's gonna have to swing a lot of points with this Glusty here. So I think I'm just gonna play the Great Oak here for value. I still have these incredible power plays. And now we can kill the... Karen with our Skags. We can even kill this with Zoltan. Like, how good is that? And we keep getting points. Like, he got the Frightener off, but now we're we're so many points ahead of him. And now we have this 10-point Skags, which is just gonna kill whatever he plays here. And if he plays like Glusty, it's just big. It's just a big Skags. He plays Glusty perfectly into my Skags. The 21-point Glusty. But it gives us a 20 point Skags. And he's not even remotely close to where we are right now. So I'm just gonna Skags this, get more points. Yeah, sure, Yennefer. He loses by 37 points. I mean, that's just good, right? All right, we're playing against Svalblood. They haven't nerfed Svalblood at all, so I'm guessing Svalblood is still going completely crazy in ranked. We lose coin flip, which is kind of annoying. But we have, we have Skags in hand, which is very good, especially because we also have a Dwarven Agitator in our hand. Whoa, since when is this board so bright? This is a whole new experience. It's pretty good. I could Cleaver that, but I'm just going to hold on to Cleaver for now. That's why I'm holding on to Cleaver. Oof, that's a bit annoying. Okay, against Svalblood, it's a bit scary. So I think we're going to pass here on the next turn. He's playing Portal, which is pretty nuts. He stays ahead here though, that's kind of annoying. So I think I'm just gonna play out my Zegrin to have carryover for the next round, to make it not as hard as as hard for him to two round me. We are all right to pass here. The fact that they have nerfed Svalbard now is a bit dumb. I'm still good with this long round. This long round is still decent. We have a good Ithlin, we have a good hand here actually. He's gonna push me. I think that's pretty obvious. I'm gonna fill Evangel here. He's playing Portal and playing this. This guy for real? I could kill the Olaf with Sheldon, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna Barclay here to keep this dwarf alive for our Sultan to still get some value. He can pass here. I don't mind going down a card here because the Ithlin on the Skags is very, very powerful. Ow. Okay, so I think we lose this, but it's still going to be a bit close, actually. But with his Renew and his Vild Carl, he should be fine here. I think we're going to see a lot of Svalblood <laughs> in this meta. Alright, against Crack. Let's see how well we do against Crack. We're going to have a lot of boosted units, and Crack does like a long round. We lose Coin Flip, though, which is kind of annoying. The colors on this are so much better now. <laughs> I'm gonna boost the Weeping Willow here. I don't think there's anything we can do here other than pass. These two cards are ridiculously good. But that also means he plays the, the Captain dude, which is gonna get zero value now. I think passing here is actually correct. I know it's uneven and everything, but these two engines are just too scary. He plays Spear. What a weird deck. So is he going to go for the 2-0? And I do think he is. So playing out Phila onto Milva, it might seem a bit overcommittal, but you have to play it safe. You always do. So we're going to boost this by 2. Stack back row for our Dennis Cranmar here. I think he plays, yeah, he plays the boat that damages all damaged units. Yeah, we have to play Cranmar here to play around the boat. I think we're looking pretty good here, actually. We have a good short round. Got a 12-point Zoltan Shive. Oh, he's playing Regis. Okay. So I think playing Skags here is actually better than playing Weeping Willow here. He's going to pass. And we got a pretty good short round here. So 
See, passing on even there was actually kind of correct. I think we look good. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Weeping Willow, yeah, might be correct in this deck, actually. The more I think about it. It was close. Weeping Willow carried us there. It's pretty good. All right, Henselt, we're not favored against. We are very unfavored against Henselt, actually. We're going to keep Dragoon. He does play row locked cards. We can pass here. He played out some scary engines there. We're unfavored in this matchup. Completely unfavored as we have very little control. Okay, so I think he's going for the 2-0. Okay, so he's going for the 2-0. That's fair. It's pretty insane, actually. I'm going to play the Whispering Hillock for 5 vitality here. Yeah, this is very unfavored here. Still somehow catching, keeping up here. That's actually kind of crazy. Oh, but this is, yeah, this is hopeless. We're never ever really favored against Tensult. Let's just waste this guy's time for no reason. Alright, Ada, we're pretty unfavored against Northern Realms. But let's still see how we do here. Summoning Circle, turn one. I'm gonna play my Ithlan on the Weeping Willow here. I might actually play out Weeping Willow this round as well. I don't know why they destroy the shield every time. It's pointless. It still gets the vitality. Scorch. Oh, I actually got Scorch. Wow. That has to be the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Pretty good skirmisher there. Get to Philavandral. But I think we still lose this. Oh, man. We have five dwarves. So we can kill it with Zoltan. I think I'm gonna just kill this with Skags. Yeah. I mean, he still has the huge Hubert, but... We have some points here, actually. I think 16... Yeah, I think he's done it though. Yeah, this Hubert is huge. It's a true huge bird. What? Okay, we actually win against the Northern Realms even though we're unfavored. All right, we're playing against Nilfgaard. Okay, we drew Skags. Really, really good. I can keep pushing this round actually. Then play out. Uh, he, nah, he's gonna muzzle the Gabor actually. Oh God. For real? Should play around that actually. I don't like doing this, but I have to play out my Zoltan here. Sure. He's Ardled he's just Ardled my Zoltan. I mean it's just a past then I guess. Whatever. Alright, he can, he might find something bad from bribery here actually. But he's probably gonna find like Ithlin or Oak. Wow. I think this is where he passes. Okay. It's not looking too bad. We still have this ridiculous Skags in our hand. Is it Serret Aux? Okay, so he has 15 points in hand, which is not enough. And we win this game, even a card down. He must be really upset about that. Ah, I love winning against Ardal. It's the best feeling in the world. Playing against Eithne. He's wasted his Geralt on a Doppler, which is actually really good for us because we have Mackham defenders. We're full on pushing this now. Or we can pass like a normal human being. I mean, this is just good, right? He played out Cleaver, Geralt, Kieran. We can pass. This is just the, the best pass we could have possibly asked for. But we still need to find Skags here. Finding Skags is kind of a necessity. If he plays out a card, we Ithlin the Weeping Willow, and then play out Weeping Willow to stay in the round. But, he passed. We can play Gabor for 5 points of carryover, and we have a 10 point Philavandral. Because people do like to play for the long round these days. Okay, I need to find my Skags here though. That's not Skags. That's definitely not Skags. Okay, not finding Skags is a bit dicey here. Hmm. How do I want to go about this now? This goes for 5 vitality. I think what we're gonna do is... Volunteer the mercenary. Play out one of the mercenaries. Uh, not volunteer, I mean agitator the mercenary. I 
thing is gonna ith me it. He's not gonna ith me this. Which I'm perfectly fine with actually. Now we can agitator the other mercenary. Fair play. He's got skags in hand. It's so bad that we don't have skags right now. There's the skags. 11 point skags. Pretty insane. 5 point sultan is pretty good though. We kill the Sursa here. And he needs pretty... Dude, this deck is insane in the long round. Alright, now after you've seen this deck perform its miracles how you play this deck on blue coin is very different from how you played on red coin on red coin you can push round one incredibly hard but on blue coin you have to be very cautious and find a very good pass sometimes you won't find a pass against something like a svalblood or something as i did when they're always ahead of you no matter what you do and this deck is ridiculous Ridiculously good against something like Arrakis Queen, which plays for a long round and has one single finisher, whereas you have a bunch of big point plays that just go way over the provision cost. And even against something like Ithne, it's very strong because Ithne also does like to play for the long round. Feel free to net deck this. You can add some changes. I think v Weeping Willow is actually correct in this deck. The more I play it, the more I think this is a very good alternative to Skags, as Skags requires the opponent to have a big target, whereas this is just big points. And that's the thing, this deck is big points. You're gonna have a lot of units, eight and above. And yes, I hope some of you can make this deck better than it already is. I think in a long round, the only deck that beats this deck is Henselt. And nobody's really playing any Northern Realms right now. So I do feel in the current meta, this deck can actually go a lot of places. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, subscribe for more Gwen content, and I'll see you soon.